I'm Amanda Leitner, and welcome to Rochester Rising, where we amplify the stories of Rochester entrepreneurs. Welcome to episode 213 of the show today. So thanks so much for joining us today for the Rochester Rising podcast. We appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with us. A brand new podcast comes out every Wednesday, sharing stories of both new and experienced entrepreneurs within Rochester, Minnesota. On the podcast, we really work to understand why these business owners love the work that they do, and we want to learn more about their business journey here in the community. A new podcast comes out every week, and you can really listen in wherever you like to consume podcast content the best. You can find all our podcasts on our website at rochesterrising.org. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and our YouTube channel. So really, you can listen in anywhere that you prefer to connect with your podcasts. Every Thursday, the day after the podcast airs, we run a short article based on the podcast on our website at rochesterrising.org. We encourage you to check out both forms of content to learn more about and celebrate entrepreneurs within our community. Rochester Rising is the storytelling arm of Collider, which is a Rochester-based 501c3 nonprofit that supports Rochester entrepreneurs through storytelling, space, events, and education. You can find out more about Collider at our website at collider.mn. You can also connect with both Collider and Rochester Rising on social media or on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. All right, so now let's go to today's podcast where I got the opportunity to chat over Zoom with Annie Balo, owner of Thai Pop. Annie is a native of Thailand, and she moved to Rochester with her husband, Ryan, in 2012. In Thailand, Annie worked as a trained medical lab scientist in a local hospital system. But when she moved to Rochester, she found that she really missed the food that she was used to having at home. And she decided to learn how to cook Thai food herself, which is something she actually did not have much experience with beforehand. She learned to cook Thai food through experimentation and got so good at it that in 2015, she started doing pop-ups at Forager Brewery to share her Thai cooking with the community. In 2019, she moved into a more permanent location with her business, Thai Pop, at Marrow, which is located in the basement of what was then Grand Rounds Brewing. Join us for today's podcast as we talk more about Annie's journey with food and her business, Thai Pop. We actually did not plan this, but today, February 17th, is the first day that Thai Pop has been open for takeout since October. So this is a really special time for Annie and Thai Pop and everyone involved with that. So check them out and join us for today's podcast with Annie to learn more about this Rochester business. So with that, we'll jump right into the podcast with Annie Balo and Thai Pop. Thanks so much for doing this today. I appreciate your time and connecting and you have a beautiful bright room there. So much different than mine. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's a lot of sun and a lot of uh, house plants in the house. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, heart. Amanda, for having me today. You're very welcome. Yeah. So I wanted to start out talking, learning a little bit more about you. So can you share a little bit of your background and Like, what do you do in your spare time? What are your hobbies and interests that you like to do? Yes. Um, So my name is Annie Vela, but my Thai name is Nin La Gan. Yes. I was born and raised in Thailand, Um, moved here in 2012. Yes. I was a medical laboratory scientist back home, um, working at my hometown hospital for two years and... I met my husband, Ryan Bell. He's from, actually, he's from Rochester. He was a Peace Corps in Thailand at how we met. And he, he brought me here, actually. And, um, yeah, and the thing that I interest to do is cooking and eating and learn a lot of, like, a different, I would say, like, a different region of food, different country. I love to explore the new culture, new food. That that what I really enjoy doing for the spare time. I'm not really have 
any spare time. I just have a baby now, two months old. So that is all my time. <laughs> that, well, congratulations. That, that, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, I totally understand that. Yeah, the spare time has gone to like nothing. <laughs> I know, yeah. It used to be like, we, we always like hang out and go to like places doing stuff, hiking, but now it's just all with the baby, but yeah. Eventually, yeah, you'll get back yeah, into eventually, it. Eventually, girl. Yep. <laughs> Once you get to springtime, you can you mm-hmm. can get a stroller and wheel your baby around. Yeah, and <laughs> hiking and stuff. But yeah, looking yeah, forward to that. I think yeah, exploring new cultures through food is so powerful because I feel like yes. you really understand like the essence of mm-hmm. that that culture. Yes, it's to- it totally. It, it's something that I'm, it's just so lucky that me and my husband like to do the same thing. He loved doing, uh, like learning a new food. We love trying a new, like we t- try to set our goal. Like each month, we want to try a different cuisine. Like take our like our like entire support local. That what we've been doing. That what I like to do too. So get to get to know, get to learn a different food, different country. And there's so many restaurants in in town in Rochester, yes, especially the chain restaurant. So yeah, it, mm-hmm. it's, a, it, it's a I'm happy time. to see it's so much chinks in the last five years that when I first moved here, there's not a lot of like Thai or like a different country, but now it's just different uh, option for us to choose from. So it's it really good to see that in town. How did you originally get started with with cooking? Where did that passion come from? Well. I, I would say, oh, honestly, I'm not really cook when I'm back home in Thailand. So if you like imagine in Thailand that you can go out and you can buy food anywhere, 24 hours, it's food every corner. So that is, I'm not really have a chance to cook, but doesn't mean I'm not really like want to cook, but I just don't have a chance back home. I went to college in Bangkok. I stay in one apartment. Um there's just room, no kitchen. So I think that's why I'm not really cooking much. And every time when I went back home, visit my family, I just enjoy watching my family cooking. Uh, my sister always cook and I just get to watch them cook. They're not really allow me in the kitchen so much since I'm really young and they probably don't trust that I can cook. So until I moved here in 2012, is the at the time I don't think it's any Thai restaurant in Tao. No, no, none. So I'm really new and I don't know where can I get Thai food. And I remember the first summer that we moved, I moved here and Ryan's parents, he has a big garden and he grow a lot of green beans. So one thing that is popped in my head, I really want a spicy green bean salad that where can I get that? So I just went to his garden and pick up the green beans and make first dish of Thai food in the state is spicy green bean salad. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I miss my home. What can I do to like, like it's no Thai food here. I have to start cooking more Thai food. Like, so that, that how I come up with, like, I want to cook more. And another thing is my husband, he, he been living in Thailand for two and a half years. He loved Thai food. He always asked me to, um, cook some Thai food, but I'm really don't know how to make any, a lot of Thai food at all. So I get a chance to call my sister, look it up on uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube, how to cook all the Thai food. So basically I learned everything like through like our experience, our experimenting, but, but it all come together somehow. It, yeah. That's so funny. So you really didn't learn to cook Thai food mm-hmm. until you moved to the U S. Yes. <laughs> I, I, oh yes. It's still experience. I just, it's just been watching and eating in Thailand. So that are ne- not really cooking. Yeah. But I always, yeah. Passionate <laughs> about that. <laughs> I feel like YouTube has like such good information too about cooking, baking, like the techniques. Because you can't, I mean, you can read things in a cookbook, but like you have to see somebody doing the technique. True. Yeah, yeah, it is. Especially Thai, especially Thai food, where's a lot of like a secret recipe ingredients that they're not really like you can't really find that on like YouTube or the recipe book. It's something that each 
household or family have their own secret thing, how this food should be done, something like that. So it's a little bit of the tip on that. So yeah, I, I completely understand that too. I actually have, um, yeah, I have a like yeah. church cookbook and I know that like, <laughs> I know there's a couple things missing from some of the recipes. I'm like, I know someone just didn't put something in there because they didn't want everyone to know. <laughs> like it would just take it yeah. over. <laughs> so yeah, people keep their secrets very, very close. Yes. But I remember, remember for my wedding, we, um, my mom asked people to submit recipes for me for a book. Cause I do mm-hmm. like to cook a lot as well. And my, uh, my best friend growing up, her mom was from Germany. Like she moved mm-hmm. to the U S from Germany and yeah. she made just the best like cabbage and noodles. And, uh, my favorite food is probably linguine and clams, which is kind of weird. Like people don't like that. And she put it in that book and I'm like, this isn't what this is not what you make. Like something yeah. is missing from here. <laughs> and something I you hide it. it. <laughs> but my husband hates linguine and clam, so I rarely oh. make it. <laughs> yeah, well. It's oh. for my birthday because then it's mine and I don't care. It's my day. <laughs> yeah, I got to eat that. You have to eat this. <laughs> yeah. <What> are, <laughs> but talking, about, talking about the recipe book, it's it really fun, like, Back in Thailand, people not really have, people have the recipe, but people not really writing down so much. It's something that is kind of like really different how I imagine how people cook here and people cook back in Thailand. Like I I cook a lot here and my husband's family have asked, what is ingredient? What is a recipe? I said, I don't have a recipe. It's just like whatever I feel like this is, how I like how at my home I eat. It's just, it's something that I can catch it. I, I don't know how to explain how to write it down exact. We're not really measuring stuff back home so much. It, yeah, like I mentioned before, it's each house would have a different recipe. So it, it, it yeah, that makes us different here that everything like baking, stuff like that have to be exact. Like, oh, this is a cup of sugar, something like that. But I, I don't see entire cuisine so much. Yeah, so you really yeah. have to pass down by word yeah. of mouth the, mm-hmm. the recipes. Like you learn that from your experience cooking from your family. Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we wanted to talk about Thai pop. So for people who haven't eaten your food before, haven't been to one of, seen you in person at one of the locations yeah. you've been at over the years, how would you describe Thai pop and the food, the experience there? Yeah, so I want to break down Thai pop into two town. The Thai pop before the pandemic mm-hmm. and the Thai pop after the pandemic. So uh, we've been doing, uh, before the pandemic, we've been doing a, the, I was like a pop up, a Thai pop dining experience, uh, something that I serving a seven to eight courses, tasting menu in each, um, da, in each, uh, time reaching the theme so the whole set of the food will change it's inspired by like during the time like can be like the food that I miss the food that I grow up with and sometimes it's like my dad inspiring a lot of a lot of something different this one time that we went back to Thailand so we come back with a whole like a home part one home part two home part three so every time when we um, come to Thai pop, you will get to try something totally different mm-hmm. um, out of your comfort zone. Some You will get, um, I would say, like a story behind that. You're not just eating, but you get to learn Thai culture, mm-hmm. learn the Thai, something that through the food that I serve. Yeah, I, people like that a lot and we really enjoy doing that. But once the pandemic hit, so we cannot doing the same thing anymore. So we got have to do take out. So, but it's still, I would say that type of take out is just something that we, the dishes that we bring out is like something that popular people know and some something that comfortable for people to order like pad thai, tom yum, tom kha soup. But I always 
put the spin that the something that it's not just have to be normal Thai food. It's something that this is what you get when you go to Thailand, like a real spice, real flavor. I'm not watering down any ingredients, anything. It's just how we eat at home. I think that is the charm that why people like Thai pop take out. It's just something that, yes, you may get the same dish with the Thai restaurant, but the flavor that how we keep it different, like how we eat at home. And, and I think that the, the, the charm that we have for Thai pop take out. Yeah, I think that's really important because it's authentic and it's like you said, it's <laughs> what you would experience if you went to Thailand and ate the yeah. food there. So yeah. yeah. Like we not literally like down the spicy level too. Like <laughs> this is how I eat unless you like have like a comment like when you order. Annie, can you actually make it like mild? Oh I try to talk them to like, Are you sure you don't want to try that how we eat? But like so that that yeah. You have to have the full experience, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you were a research technician or a medical technician in uh, Thailand. Yes. When you came here, so did when you came to the U.S., were you interested in doing that work here as yes. well? Or then how did you kind of say, okay, I'm, I'm going to do the, I'm going to cook and do a restaurant. So what was that kind of conversation process like for you? Yeah, so... <laughs> When I quit my job, I tell my family, okay, no worry. I still going to try to get a job at some hospital here in the U.S. So I try to get my license, my certificate, my board certificate. So I've been studying a lot and I finally got the, the certificate. Um, at the same time that I start cooking. but So I have a glean forward what I really want to do. I really want to work at the hospital or I want to cook. And I'm so much enjoy cooking. Like it just, it never end, you know, like once you start this and you want to learn more, what else of the Thai food that I can do? It just, it just like something changed me and make me, I would say like, not like routine, like a something that keep me going, make me happy that. So I, I try to like, Maybe I hold on in the like the medical field and do what I really enjoy doing now. So when, once I do the pop-up at Forger, it's just like I do that like twice, I was like twice a month. And I get that happiness from the smile from customer. I think that is really give me like I this is the right path that I want to do. The community that so much love I think that that why I'm done with what I want to do before I move mm -hmm. here so that what I choose to do is cooking yeah yeah I think that's so cool you have to follow where your heart is where your passions are and you can always go back to medical I think you have to you know yeah follow you know yeah. your heart and, but, and yeah it's something that what what is at the moment that I want to do is the cooking that I really follow my heart that this is what I want to do. And I really have a passion and enjoy doing it so much. And yeah, if it's not going to work that I can restart it again, but I just want to give it a try that this is, this is the right way that I want to do. This is the right thing. Mm -hmm. I actually think baking yeah. and cooking has a lot of ties to science actually, because it has to be more <laughs> you know, baking certainly, you know, like you were saying, it has to be pretty exact. Like if you don't yep, put yeah. water in there mm -hmm. or something enough, it's just not going to work. And yeah. certainly like French patisserie is very True. challenging, yep. but yeah, cooking, like it's very, like everything has a purpose and it goes mm -hmm. the same thing as science. You know, there's, there's a way to put something together, you know, yeah, so it's, it's like, like a, a experimenting too a lot of yeah. time, like, Oh, this is not going to work. I tried it again. A lot of time that, that yeah. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so like you said you kind of started out doing pop-ups at forager yes so can you talk a little bit about so that was kind of 29 was that um, no uh, so we start our first pop-up at forager in 2015 okay yep um but yeah it, like we do pop-up every wednesday night twice a month but just during the fall and winter time it's just like a small back room at the brewery that we can host about 
30 something each people at the room and like a big long table, like at everyone like who want to attend have to buy the ticket ahead of time to the event, right? So in each pop-up, we serve, like I mentioned earlier, like a different theme. So get to try eight different cars every single time. So we've been doing that for the fa- the last four, probably like four years, three or four years at Forger Brewery. And when we start off, it's just me and Ryan, my husband. We do like a, some something fun to bring Thai food, introduce Thai food to people in Rochester, uh, family and friend, like something yeah, that we enjoy doing that. And sometimes his mom come to help me prep and we getting really busy, I would say, because people like it the way that we bring out the food and yeah, and I get to a, able to hang one more person to help me at the kitchen. At the room, like people sit at a long table and I cook in front of them, serving in each dish. And I will get to like, what, this is the fun part that I really enjoy it and get to talk in each dish that I bring it out. I have like the story behind that one, why I create this dish and talking what is some, yeah, reread what is ingredients and people really enjoy, really, really enjoy an interesting, a lot of creation. What, what, how you eat this dish in Thailand, what is region that you serve this? And it's something really fun and enjoy doing that. And we've been doing that um, at the same time that I work as a server at Viso Binky. So that's how, how we do pop up at Forger. It's not really become a full time business, it's just a hobby. I think that's super cool though, because it's kind of like it allows you to have that start kind of with in a low risk environment and talk with people and interact with people and really learn. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's one thing that I want to mention. I got a really, um, really lucky, a good opportunity from Annie Henderson. Um, yeah. She's the owner of uh, Forger Brewery. Yeah. Ryan and her used to work together at the C4. Okay. A, yes, it's a art studio back in town, 2013, 14. They do like a a fundraising thing. And she asked me if I want to do like a catering, like a fun appetizer. That's how we get actually start at Forger Brewery with her. And then I, yeah, she asked me to do like a small appetizer, a couple of things. So I end up doing that. Like the first one is chicken satay and a, the some pork salad with a strawberry. And yeah, and she, that it turned out really good and she really liked the food and people like it. And that how she know that I love cooking. And then she have asked us if we want to do a pop-up at the same time that they're building a forger brewery. So she asked me like, if you want to do the pop-up at, at the back room that they're going to build out. So yes, why not? This is a good opportunity for us to do something totally different that no one in town have done that, like the pop-up thing before. It, it really new to Rochester. So yeah, it sounds fun and that will bring a lot of joy and fun thing to town. So we say yes to her that, yeah, that's how we actually get started with Thai pop too. So then you were doing these pop-ups for a couple years and then mm-hmm. um, got an opportunity to move into Marrow. So can you tell people like, what is Marrow? Cause I, I still don't think a lot of people even know what it is <laughs> and how did, yeah. how did you transition from pop-ups at Forager into Marrow? What was the difference? Okay. Uh, one thing that I want to mention, and uh, I met Tessa at a Rochester Women's Forum there, um, she's like introduced me to uh, her marrow room where it's like um, she wants to build like a res- residency chef uh, project that a different chef come to the room and serving the food, a kind of like rotating chef or something like that. So she just asks, oh, hey, is Thai Pop want to move here and do something fun? And it's such a good opportunity for us to do it there because of basically like a, we got a permanent home. We can put our stuff there. Like our like every time when we do pop up at Forger, we have to bring our own dishes, own food, bring it in, bring it back. So it's a lot of work in each pop up. So this is such a good opportunity for us that we can just actually move and leave our stuff there, make it kind of like floor to run the pop up. 
And we say, yes, why not? This is a really a good opportunity that Tessa gave that to us. So the Merrill Room is a small 28 seating at the basement of the Grand Rao Brewery where um, uh, when we started two different chefs that run the dinner or uh, Thai pop uh, doing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And Chef Paul, he is a Jane Beard Award winning chef, Chef Paul Berglund. He's uh, doing um, th Thursday, Friday, Saturday fat noodles. Do the same idea, tasting menu that what we've been doing before the pandemic. So, and that that how we come up with the Thai pop at Mero. And we still keep the same idea that how we start with like tasting menu, like eight courses tasting menu, like, yeah, at the marrow room. Super cool. Yeah. So you started there, was that like, well, when did you start in marrow? 2019 at some point, right? Yes, uh, the end of 2019. The end of 2019. So yeah, the end of 2019, just right before the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. It, it literally, what, it just a oh, chaos time because we start and, got a super good feedback people like it and uh like i said we sell the ticket ahead of time like every ticket seating is for it's like like a month in the head and then we went back to thailand in 2020 like around the pandemic start and we get back to rochester launching the new menu like from the idea from home series and like this is going to be so much fun. And then the first day, the governor vault uh, has an order that every restaurant have to be closed for takeout only. So we have to refund all the seating mm -hmm. and all the idea. We're like, oh no, <laughs> everything that we're hoping to serve, to bring it out, all the idea that we get from our travel, it have to be on hold. So it's kind of like, but it is what it is. It's, it's something that, yeah. Yeah. So have you, so during the pandemic, you moved to takeout only. Have you been able to offer in-person service? Probably not because it's super small or were you able to? Yes, we actually, um, so we were doing a pop-up at a, the mirror room before. And then we kind of like, no, this is not going to work because it have to be 50%, right? Like, yeah. So we kind of like spread out. It's only like seven people that we can host at each time. So I don't think this is going to be, gonna work out and it's too small to bring people in at one time. So we moved to the upstairs room at the at the Grand Rao Brewery. So they have a bigger space and tall ceiling. So we'll be able to operate that a little bit more okay. until, until the order that you you have to close for takeout only. That that what it changed a lot. It just totally like all the new experience about takeout. We have zero experience about that. We have totally flipped with from experience dining to takeout. And I like, oh, what I gonna do between close it down or change that to takeout. So we choose this pad to, to do takeout. So that, that how we come that today. So you've been doing, so you did takeout from like March to October yep. the whole no. time. Yep. Yeah. March to October until like I have a baby, but, but <laughs> during the, <laughs> until, the, yeah, but do like, uh, during the summertime, we have opportunity to get back to our tasting menu for the couple months. Yeah. So that, that is a fun part during the last, last summer that we get to do that. It's kind of like spread people out. We got a big room, but yeah. And back to the to very stressful to figure out how to do takeout and go, you know, have ordering online and everything oh, like that. Yes, it it really a uh, big chance for us, but we got a really, really good help. A lot of good advice from Tessa and her team at the Grand Rao. They, yeah, the first night that we had our takeout, it was chaos, like, the food were running out like 40 minutes. I'm not kidding. 40 minutes to our wait for our food because we like, we don't know anything about take out. We just like, oh my God, the, the ticket keep coming, keep coming. And like, oh my gosh, I don't know. The, the food is going to come out on time. And yeah, people were waiting like an hour to get the food. Yeah. Oh, because, well, you know, then you know yeah. you're 
you know, you have a good product if people will wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but then at the end of the night, Tess are like, nope, you guys have to like, yeah, change something, how to make it like, you know, make it flow. So she give us a lot of advice. So we come up with a new plan. And the next day, like only one day, like the next morning, like, nope, we have to do everything totally different way. So we got at the second day, everything worked out perfect, better than the first day. But yeah, until now we get everything a good flow. The food is come out just right on time and hot and fresh. Yeah. <laughs> you got to learn. And you know, when you yeah. make mistakes, you just learn from it and don't do it again, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so did you all do delivery too? Or did no. people I say that's no. a lot? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we do, we do all just, um, pick up um our takeout thing is run a little bit different from others so mostly we encourage people to order ahead of time because we it's just four people working at the kitchen so mm-hmm. we have a really limit supply no, i don't want to say supply we want to make everything fresh in order so i don't want to overwhelm everything have that come out have to be fresh and nice mm-hmm. and so i don't want to be like just like a make a ton of money, ton of food, but the quality is not right. So that's why we kind of want to focus on the quality of the foods and the amount of food that we're going to send out. So people will be able to like go to our website and order what day that they want to pick up and what time that they want to pick up. So we kind of have like set a limit that uh, like every 15 minutes that people can pick up from 4.30 to 7 o'clock. So that that how we've been running and yeah it it helped us us a lot about the flow when people pick up the food and not get too crazy and busy. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you are reopening for takeout next week, right? The seventeenth. Yep, the seventeenth. <laughs> that yep. has to be super exciting. <laughs> I am. I can't wait to get back to work. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, like, I'm really enjoy the time with my baby, but also I really want to to get back to work. It is one thing that. I've been missing is cooking. Yeah. So yeah. what it seems that, you know, your cooking Thai pop has had a really positive reception in the community and has a lot of support. You know, what does that kind of feel like to you? And I think going back to what you're talking about earlier about, you know, talking to people about the food you're making, did you feel that there was a lot of education you had to do about Thai food in the community or did, were people pretty aware I, I think was. people are pretty aware of like like Thai food is really popular people know a lot about that but a lot of time when we do a pop-up at Forge Brewery I, I serving a lot of something totally different out of the comfort zone something that they never heard of before so I, I be able to talk about that and give people some like how we eat at home something like that in that dish but a lot of dishes that people know is already that oh I know about this and but something that hidden story about that dish that people don't know so they, they really enjoy to hear that from me and oh I never know that but I'm really familiar with Tom Yum but I never know like what is actually the story behind that something like that so and I think that one that draw people into Thai pop that they will get food and the story and hear about the food yeah yeah I think in the community you have a pretty significant following people who love your food you know like you said people waiting in line for takeout for an hour on the first day like what does that feel like to you to have this this dream this vision this passion and then see the people who who love it Oh, I'm very overwhelmed, like <laughs> super overwhelmed like, and happy, like, and I would say like, I don't know how to explain, but it just give me a chill that people really love and encourage me to do more. A lot of people like been following us since they wonder we do pop up at, at Forge Brewery until today and this, they're not just coming and eating my food, they help us to spread out the word out about Thai pop they really such a good community of people here in Russia so that really want people to be succeed they, 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 yeah it's something that I'm really appreciate that how community how people here help each other to get the, the part that they want to be succeed yeah 
So you said you run this business with your husband, Ryan. Yeah. So what is it, what is it like to run a business with your, with your spouse? And do you have any tips for people listening who do do that or are thinking about it? Like, how do you guys balance everything? Okay. So it's a good, and I know it's a good and bad. It's been good and bad. Um, since me and him have a different way to get stuff done, he is literally like everything have to be in order and so strict. But me, I'm literally laid back. I'm literally, oh yeah, that's why everything is gonna turn out good. And so we have a lot of conflict when we first working together and like, no, no, no. I like, I don't know, I can work with him. He don't know he can work with me. But at the <laughs> end of the night, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the night, we're like, oh, we have to sit down and talk. So we talk what 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 we have to change. And he always listen. I always listen to him. So we kind of share what I should change, what he should change to come to the way to make it succeed. So I think that is the tip that I we have to do, like listen to each other and talk. It's the main thing that talk, what you don't like about this, what I don't like about this. So I think that that mm -hmm. so it's yeah. always been good yeah mm -hmm. right now that especially so last year yeah yeah the listening See? communicating yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the the key word is listening and communicating yeah mm -hmm. and I think it is really important to have like you were saying different skill sets and different ways to approach something because then you just you know produce a full yep. product you know that complement each other yeah, yes, especially if like you work with your spouse and you know what kind of uh, like what kind of stuff that he wants to get done. I have know that he really strict, so I kind of like okay, I know the way that he wants to do. So I uh, like you, you understand like I would be acceptable. Yes, this is how he is, and he know that I lay back, so I kind of like change a little bit to be in like in the middle, not yeah. like. Yeah, can't really get mad because the way that he is, but kind of like the end of the night, we talk. So, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but but we, it's good. Last year, he not work with me anymore. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, he he's not really work at the kitchen. So, he's uh mostly he do like um kind of like marketing mm -hmm. and doing stuff like that. So. It's the kitchen. It's just me and all the girls at my employee. I be able last year to hire four more people in the kitchen to help with the takeout. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. Oh, thank you. So you've started this almost six years ago now, going from pop up to now Marrow and having four employees. <laughs> yes, it is. It's just like at first, just me and him, and now I'm the yeah four employees. So <laughs> yeah. So. I think going back to what we talked about earlier, like what, what, why are you passionate about doing this? What do you love about this that keeps you doing this? Like you were saying, you can't wait to get back next week to do this again. So why, what about this do you love? Well, the happiness of the people that have my food, I would say that. Um, and every time when I go back to the kitchen, I just feel like it feel for my heart that it's something that I always want to do. It just, I, I don't know how to explain. I just really love and enjoy cooking and just want to cook. Even when I have a baby, I still have to manage time. I want to cook like lunch and dinner. Some people like, no, just get the frozen food. Nope, I want to cook. I, I Yeah, it's just something that just made me like want to keep going in each day like motivate me just something that drives you through the day cooking. yes it's something that I I love cooking I love enjoy I, I want to say I love and, and I enjoy really happy when I hear a good feedback from customer and a lot of time that people even like when they pick up the food at the end of the night they text me they call me Annie your take out today is so good and it's something that feel me like oh you give me, I even want to do more better, better in each day and each day is something that want to be a better and every single day because of I cook and people happy when they eat my food. Yeah. So you really get motivated from hearing yeah. the feedback and interacting yeah. with the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
So we're in February, 2021. You're getting ready to do your next, to reopen for takeout next week on the 17th. Mm -hmm. What are you looking forward to with, with Thai Pop in 2021? What are you excited well, about? Well, um, we actually were planning to open our own restaurant in this year. We were actually plan on like the last summer that yes, this is the year that we want to do something. Hopefully the COVID is gonna be over and things gonna work out. And we plan, we got the almost got the place and yeah, my husband really excited. We working with our marketing team and stuff like that. And well, thing is not really going the way that we want. The case is still crazy and the you know it doesn't seem like it's gonna slowing down at all. So we turned that off the restaurant. So we hide, we stick with our takeout for this year. And maybe along the side, we want to do something fun, like an event, a catering, and maybe like a summertime when things slow down, like the COVID slow down, we want to get back to our tasting menu. Yeah, eventually. But yeah, for this year, we, we just want to stick with our takeout platform and tasting menu. But hopefully things better by next year and we plan it again to open our own space. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's very smart. There's still a lot of unknowns this year. Yeah, no one true. knows when it's going to get much better. It yeah, will. We, <laughs> yeah. Since we don't really have a ton of experience about restaurant, we don't want to be like, you know, like get okay, let's do it. And then thing is not like certainly like normal yet. And we don't want to be dealing with all that chaos thing. And yeah, so yeah. we try to play in the safe zone first just to do a takeout for this year. Try to like save some money and expand more customer base. Maybe next year we have more customer, we have more people, we have more fan. And yeah, we feel more confident to do that next year. And yeah. Yeah. Just keep gaining momentum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I have some final fun questions for you that I've been asking everybody uh, this year. So you know, my first question for you, I've been this year really trying to work on being positive. You seem like a very positive person. Like you said, you're very laid back. Like, what do you, how do you do that? Like, what are your secrets to having that positive mindset in what you do? I keep thing like really like I'm not really take I'm taking things serious, but I try to like whatever that come to me that is a bad or serious stuff. I try to look in a positive way, like maybe that thing would change, would turn into positive, something like that. I try to make things even like in a bad way. I try to look at the different way than other people see it. That why I keep me in the good mood, positive mood. That not really try to stick with that so long if I get into the bad mood I try to like doing something that nope this is not gonna help I have to change like I have to do something to get this out of my head and maybe go walk outside or something and yeah change the mood and yeah become a happy and yeah the bad mood bad, bad negative thing is not gonna help better so have to get it out quickly as fast as I can. That that what has always been, not stuck with that. Not always like, yeah, not always like, yeah, keeping on your head. Just yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, I think a lot of times we get bogged down in thinking that something's really horrible. We made this huge mistake, and it's like it doesn't really nothing really matters that much. You know, it's like yeah. move on, learn. Yeah, from just it. move on. It's our yeah, same thing. Like it's already happened. I cannot do anything now. It just have either I just gonna stuck with that or move on. One thing that I always I move on and always try to put the positive thing in my head. Like yes, maybe it's gonna turn to the better way. Something like that. That it helped me a lot get to these. Yeah. Yeah. It's so my last question for you. So we're in, you know, February, winter. Um, do you have any traditions around this time of the year that you like to do, whether that's, I don't know, something outside active with family, is there anything you do around this time of the year? Well, um, for this year, probably not, but usually like we 
like go hiking or something like that that we we like to do but not so much since we just have the newborn so she cannot I don't want to like bring her out so much when it's like below <laughs> like zero below but but usually yeah, we go hiking and especially like it's really new to me too because we grow up in the tropical I grow up in the tropical country so the winter time here it's kind of like a thing that it, it's a fun, always fun and like, you know, even it's cold, go outside and enjoy exploring outside, something like that. Yeah. It is really beautiful with the ice and the snow and everything. But like you said, not with the baby, not when it's like minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Like that's not, yeah. <laughs> not yeah. good for but, anybody. <laughs> I know, but but especially this year, I think it's, it's really hard with all the pandemic. And but But we try to get outside as much as we can. So we try, with the baby, we try to walk around the block, like, every day like cover block something just just to be outside but yeah that that what we can do with the baby right now can yeah that was my last question I'll just wrap up by asking you <laughs> yeah any final thoughts and where can people find you online and in person yeah you can uh find us online and be on instagram facebook uh type pop mn.com and we are coming back for take out on the 17th uh, february 17 i encourage um to order ahead of time because of we actually sold out really fast for take out too yes we usually like so alpha take out three two or three days ahead of time so oh wow yeah <laughs> so a lot of mess people around <laughs> yeah a lot of people call in like the day that we're gonna serve food like oh we cannot we can we, we don't have enough food to serve tonight it's usually like yeah we encourage people to pre-order yeah and yeah check us out and the menu the menu for takeout we changed every two weeks as we run a small menu probably like six to seven item in each menu set so and each week we change the menu so you will get to try different item every time when we, yeah well thank you so much for this conversation today and sharing your story i really appreciate it yeah thank you so much for having me today <laughs> So thanks so much to Annie for taking time to share her story with us today. We really appreciate her sharing her story and getting to learn more about her. Be sure to check out more about Thai Pop through the links in our bio and on their social media account, which is also linked in our bio as well. So check them out. And be sure to stop by the Rochester Rising website tomorrow or any of our social media platforms to check out the short story with Annie that's based on this podcast today. So that's a wrap for us at the podcast this week. We would greatly, greatly appreciate if you could like this podcast, share it with someone that you think would be interested in what you heard today. That would be such a huge help to us and helps more people learn about business development and entrepreneurship taking place in Rochester, Minnesota. Thank you so much for joining us for just a few minutes of your day today, and we'll see you here next week with a brand new story.